As a basic tutorial of how a GPS unit works for IFR, let's take a simulated flight using the Garmin GTN650. We'll fly IFR from College Park, Maryland to Atlantic City, New Jersey. We'll start by setting up the departure and destination in our flight plan. From the home screen, we'll hit Flight Plan. The departure, College Park, should already be populated, since this is where our aircraft is located when we start up the unit. We'll tap Add Waypoint and enter Atlantic City, Kilo, Alpha, Charlie, Yankee, and hit Enter. Now, after we filed, we'll call for our clearance. ATC will give us a departure frequency of, let's say, 125.65, which we can set by tapping the standby frequency in the upper right and entering 12565 and Enter. They'll also give us a squawk code 5317, which we'll enter by tapping the transponder code, entering our assigned code, and then we can tap the mode to set altitude reporting or mode C. You could also keep it on standby so it only activates once we're off, but here at non-towered College Park, we'll activate the mode C from the ground. Next, we'll enter the route we've been cleared for. That route has us first going to the Swan intersection to the northeast, then joining Victor 268 all the way to the Leah intersection. So we'll pass over Golda, Bross, and the Smyrna VOR on our way to Leah, and then proceeding on to Atlantic City. Here's how we'll put that into the 650. We'll hit Flight Plan again and tap the destination KACY. We'll hit Insert Before to add a waypoint before Atlantic City and enter Swan. Obviously, we'll choose the Swan intersection here in the US, not in Australia. Now, for the airway, we'll hit Swan and there's an option Load Airway. Anytime we have an airway on our flight plan, the GPS needs to know which points we're going to join and exit at. Swan is where we join the airway, which is why we selected Swan and are now tapping Load Airway. These are all the airways that Swan is a part of. We'll scroll down by tapping down until we find Victor 268. Now, we need to select the exit point. These are all the points along Victor 268. We scroll until we find Leah and tap that. We can preview the route to make sure it looks okay. It lists the sequence of waypoints we'll be flying over. In older GPS units, like the 430 or 530, we wouldn't have been able to enter the airway like this, and we'd have to enter each fix individually. So if that's what you're working with, it adds that extra step. So now we'll hit load, and if we scroll, we can see the whole airway segment has been added to our flight plan with each fix along the sequence. Now, if we go to our default nav page, we see that we're still being navigated direct to Atlantic City, which is obviously not what we want. We wanna to go to our first fix along the cleared route, which is Swan. We could see this too if we look at the map and scroll out. The pink line is the active segment that we're navigating on. GPS navigation is an exercise most of the time in following that pink line. The white lines, by contrast, are the inactive segments of the flight plan. You can see that the pink line is taking us direct to Atlantic City, and the white line is going to Swan and joining the airway. We want to change that. We want the pink line to take us to Swan. So we go back to the flight plan, scroll up, and tap Swan, and hit Activate Leg. What this does is it makes the segment between College Park, KCGS, and Swan active. On the default nav page, it'll show Swan and Pink, showing that we're now navigating between College Park and Swan. We can also see Golda afterwards in white, meaning that this is the next leg of the route. So that's the coloring scheme. Pink is active, white is inactive. And you can see the change on the map page as well. So we scroll out, pink line to Swan. So we're ready to depart. We're taking off on runway 33, and we've been told to enter controlled airspace heading 360. So we'll make that right turn during our climb out. As we depart, notice what happens to our guidance. The pink vertical bar on the bottom of the screen, it begins to swing to the right. We're not on that pink line. We're north of it because we're flying that 360 heading as instructed. The line is to our right, which is why the pink bar on the GPS screen is to the right. Same functionality as the needle on the VOR display, chase the needle. Now, we'll switch over to the departure frequency. We could do this by tapping the active frequency, causing them to swap. And when we check in with ATC, they'll tell us to turn right direct swan and resume on navigation. So here's what that looks like. We hit the D button, which is off to the right of the screen for direct. It pulls up swan automatically, since that's the next fix on the plan. And we tap D on the screen to activate it. 
and we start making the right turn to what the desired track is, DTK in the top center. Now what going direct is going to do is redraw the pink line from our current position directly to the Swan intersection. This is what ATC wants when they tell us to go direct to Swan. They don't want us to re-intercept the original segment between College Park and Swan. Direct means straight from wherever you are to the next point. Important distinction there. Now, as we turn direct swan, we're going to overturn on purpose here so that the pink vertical bar swings left of center. We'll illustrate a useful function of the 650 here. We can have the unit show us something called cross-track error by changing the fields. Let's do that by tapping menu in the top left, hitting configure user fields, and now we can select any of these six fields to swap out. Let's sub out the ETE field, and we're going to scroll down to cross-track error XTK and hit back. It shows our cross-track error as 0.07 nautical miles to the left. This gives us a precise idea of how far off-center that pink vertical bar is. So as we can correct, we can see the course coming back in both on the bar and as the numbers count back down towards zero. We're correcting by flying left of the desired track. The desired track, DTK, is 087, and our actual track, TRK, is 084. So we're chasing the needle to the left, and the cross-track error is going down towards zero as we center up. Once we're centered, we can put back ETE if we want. You can use any fields you're comfortable with. I tend to stick to cross-track, but I think I'm in a minority on that one. Now, as we approach Swan, what the 650 will do for us is called turn anticipation. All these fixes are fly-by waypoints, not fly-over, so we can start our turn prior to reaching Swan. What the GPS will do is take our ground speed, 100 knots, and the degree turn we need to make, which is not very big on this one, and compute when to start a standard rate turn in order to roll out right on course to the next waypoint, Golden. So in the bottom right, it'll count us down to our turn of 093 degrees, and when it hits zero, we can start our turn. After the turn, now we can see that the leg to Golda is active as that's now in pink. We'll continue navigating like that along the rest of the airway. Now, somewhere over the Delaware Bay, as we're on the segment going towards the Lea fix, we'll get handed off to the Atlantic City approach. We'll enter that frequency by tapping the standby freak and entering 124.6. Since we've gotten the handoff, let's flip that to active by tapping the swap button on the upper right. Notice the frequencies flip. Now, when we contact Atlantic City Approach, let's say they tell us to expect the Arnav Yankee approach to runway 31. This means we can brief the approach and load it into the GPS. We do that by hitting back and going to proc for procedure. We'll select approach. Our destination, KACY, is already populated thanks to the flight plan we entered before takeoff. We'll tap approach, scroll and select the Arnav 31 Yankee. We'll load the full approach for now, so we'll tap Transition and select SIE, the CIL VOR. Now, we've been told to expect the approach, but we haven't had our instructions changed in any way. So we don't want to activate it, we just want to hit Load Approach. And we can see it's been added to the flight plan. It starts at Sea Isle, where a feeder route takes us to the initial approach fix of Jenga. Notice the IAF letters on the box there. After Jenga, it's Stev, then Pristi, the final approach fix to Yibku, to runway 31, which is the MAP, missed approach point. Then the missed approach takes us to Warwick, then Kovac, the missed approach hold point. But notice that we're still direct Leah as indicated by the pink, since we haven't been instructed otherwise yet. On the map page, we can see the approach loaded in the white line segments. Next, ATC will tell us to proceed direct Jenga, the initial approach fix. So we go back into flight plan, scroll to Jenga, and hit the D button to the right of the screen, and we'll activate it by tapping direct on the screen. On the default nav page, we're now direct Jenga. We can now follow the waypoints all the way inbound on the approach. Let's move up to the point we're about to make it to the runway and say that we don't have it in sight and need to go missed. Just prior to the waypoint, we'll see it announced on the bottom right. And then as we cross over, we get this screen. The GPS wants to know if we landed or need to go missed. After having executed our missed approach procedure and climb out, we'll loop the GPS in and tap Activate GPS Missed. It'll now have us fly direct to Warwick, the first point on the missed procedure. 
Here we are approaching the holding fix, Kovac. As we approach, the GPS will announce our holding entry is parallel. Makes perfect sense from the direction we're coming. At first, it counts us down to a 193 heading, which is actually more of a teardrop entry heading. We'll ignore this. It may be an issue with the simulator, and we'll fly our parallel 218 heading once past Kovac. You can see that the GPS catches up with our parallel plan and does give us that heading ultimately. Now to clarify possible confusion here, you may notice the GPS is having us fly a 220 heading when the outbound on the approach blade is 218. The Aeronautical Information Manual 1-1-19 has some interesting information on why this is sometimes the case, degrees between GPS and actual. Don't get thrown off by this. Now we're going to fly this for the full six miles of the published procedure, a bit longer than a usual hold. And you can see on the map what it'll have us do. We'll loop around to the left to re-intercept the inbound, a standard parallel entry. When we get to six miles, it'll count us down to our intercept heading at 355, which we'll execute when it's time. This is now a great opportunity to point out another good feature of the GPS, the bearing field, BRG in the top right. As we make this turn and get further inside the racetrack pattern, notice the bearing numbers are starting to go down. Bearing is the track we would need to fly from our present position to go direct to the Kovac fix. So in other words, if we hit direct right now, this is what would display in the DTK field in the top center. We don't want to go direct to Kovac, we want to intercept the inbound course prior to getting to Kovac. So we're not going to fly that bearing, we're going to fly to the left of it so that we catch the inbound prior to getting to the fix. This is what the 355 heading we're flying does for us. Notice that as we roll out on that heading, the bearing numbers start to go up again and approach the 040 desire track. If you can understand what the bearing is showing you, you can use it as added situational awareness when you're trying to do an intercept like this on this hold entry. Okay, so we fly inbound, the unit will count us down to our outbound turn, and after we've rolled out on our outbound heading, let's say approach is gonna vector us back in for another try at the RNAV approach. They'll assign us a 130 heading, so we'll fly that. We need to reactivate the approach. We're getting vectors to final, so we go back into our proc page and tap activate vectors to final. What vectors to final does is take the final approach fix, Pristy, and draw a pink line along the approach course and just carry it all the way out. So you can see on the map there, it's stretching all the way out to like Portugal the navigation will show us how far off center we are from that line. So whenever we turn to intercept, the guidance will show us centered. ATC will give us our vectors for a downwind and a base leg, and then as we approach the course, will give us our clearance. Tell us to turn left heading 340 until established. All we have to do is make the turn. Notice the cross track indication on the bottom showing us how far off we are from the course. Also notice the bearing and see if you can use that to add to your situational awareness. We'll turn to intercept and the unit will guide us the rest of the way on the approach just as before. This mock flight was a way to show you the very basics of using the GPS for IFR. The flight plan and procedure functions are your bread and butter, but as you get more experience, you'll pick up on more details like bearing and cross track to make it more useful for you. Did you like this video? You're gonna love Flight Insight IFR Ground School. Hours and hours of videos just like this, as well as hundreds of practice test questions based on the real thing with instructor feedback. Head on over to flight-insight.com IFR right now.